Eric Lencher gets a three-dimensional look. Here's your look at the brand new Diamond Select Marvel Magneto one-half scale resin bust. Magneto was right. Show your allegiance to the one-time villain, former leader of the Brotherhood, now X-Men, with his 10-inch bust, digitally sculpted in approximately one-half scale. This Legends in 3D bust sits atop a detailed base featuring the rubble of the Xavier Institute and is limited to only 1,000 pieces. It comes packaged with a certificate of authenticity in a full-color box, designed by Joe Allard, sculpted by Sandro Luis Sampaio. If you are a fan of the Master of Magnetism, perhaps this review will pull you in the direction of wanting to get this one for yourself. The Legends in Three Dimensions Magneto One Half Scale Limited Edition Bust is available right now online. The price in which most of the sites seem to be listing this at is $159.99, so it's about $160. I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select, of course, did provide this sample we could have a look at. The Limited Edition Bust of Magneto is actually 10.5 inches in height, or it's about 16.5 centimeters tall. For those familiar with Diamond's Bust, then you know that you get yourself a Certificate of Authenticity. Generally is the case, the certificate on one side features an image of what the statue actually looks like. And then on usually the other side, you get yourself a breakdown telling you that this is an authentic Diamond Select release. In this case, Magneo, the one half scale resin bust, is limited to only again 1,000 pieces worldwide. The one that we're looking at in this review happens to be 282. Mm -hmm. As already described in the intro of this review, Magneto is actually perched atop of what's left behind of Xavier's School for the Gifted. What you can see of it, at least, will probably be a little bit easier to show you if I actually pick the statue up. I will say, though, of the other limited edition uh, Legends in Three Dimensions statues that we've looked at, Magneto tends to lean more to the heavier side of things. It may have something to do with the fact he now has an additional cape on the back, where generally busts don't tend to have that. As again already stated, you can see that on the bottom here is what's left behind of Xavier's school. You can see there's the X, the crest that's on the front of the school, and then just again, twisted metal all around it. There was one area that you have to be a little careful of. It's this cog right here. The other one on the back is so close to the rest of the remains that you don't really have to worry about snagging this, but this sticks out just enough that if you're not careful of picking the statue up, you really don't want to put pressure against this section just in case this might actually buckle. But the detailing done to the base is exceptional. I like the additional wash that they've added, adding a little bit of rusting on, obviously, to the girders there. You can see, again, all the little riveted areas here and what's left behind of the rubble. Again, you've got all the rock facing down below here. It's a really interesting looking display base. Carefully picking it up and at least spinning it around so the bottom of you can see. On the bottom, it does actually have four rubberized feet. Not only, I've said this when we looked at these usually bust reviews, that not only does the rubberized feet prevent scratching on surfaces, but it also as well ensures that the, the, the number, the number that they actually write on the bottom, doesn't in the process of moving the statue around, doesn't get worn away. The feet are only giving you just that much clearance, but it's just enough again, like if you're moving this around on tabletops, you really don't want this number to wear away in the process. But the base itself looks fantastic. It is fitting, of course, for a character like Magneto, formerly a villain, depending on, again, when you really read the comics where he appears. Sometimes he's even still a villain, but I do think that that's really an exceptional touch to include, the, the again, what's left of Xavier's school. The actual base itself, from there, of course, we'll then look to the head sculpt here of Magneto. I would say right away, one thing it kind of reminds me of is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Maybe you can see a little bit of that as well. The way they've grimaced the teeth and certainly the musculature to his face does bear a little bit of likeness, I feel, to Arnie. They decided also as well to not paint the eyes. Depending on how you feel about that, I think the pupils certainly would have helped, but I do like that it kind of gives them a little more of a craziness by not actually painting those parts in. I think one thing that certainly would have also helped as well, if you're not going to take the time to paint the pupils, I think by also adding a nice dark shadowing underneath would really also convey as well that the helmet, of course, is going to sit a little further forward. Having just a shadow going across his eyes and also then only just seeing his whites of his eyes, I think would have added a much more sinister look to the figures, the character's face. But what they've added, at least nicely done, is they've added a darker coloring. You can see like where his skin tone is more generally a lighter shade. 
they have at least dark in the areas right here but man i would have gone all out i would have just made this completely really dark so all you can then really see is maybe like this section of his eyes and then all the rest would be like very very dark and then you see of course this teeth down below it's a good looking head sculpt i will say but some people might be a little turned off by the idea that they actually didn't take the time to paint the pupils how do you guys feel about that let me know down below in the comments section but if we spin this around one thing i will say to diamond's credit is they've painted this so immaculately of course the trim that he has around the helmet isn't even just painted onto it they've actually sculpted this so all of the additional uh, all the additional sculpting that he has here on his helmet is all actually in fact raised they painted that of course in the metallic purple but then all left behind the rest of the, the metallic red to get the job done for the helmet the helmet looks again stellar the metallic actually only seems to be in that place. If you look at everything else on the actual bust, he has kind of more like the red down below, but the red is washed away with all this additional darker wash that they've added. I kind of actually like having the two different colors being separate like this. I mean, obviously in the comics, he generally would not have had like the metal look down below here for this lower half of his body. I'm glad that they actually stuck it and kept it only just to the helmet and left everything else kind of more to more kind of more simpler comic colors. And again, you got the lighter purples here for the what would be the top of his body. And of course, the trim that goes all the way around with the large half orbs that he has to hold the cape in place. This is nicely done also as well by using a purple that's not quite the same purple for the helmet, but I'm glad that it isn't the same color. And of course, if we spin this around, you don't get the full effect of seeing an entire cape because of course, like the rest of the cape is only just going to be a bust. So like this part gets cut off completely. Now they could have either painted this down below here in a matching color to the purple, where it would have just given us a complete, you know, one contained look to the cape. But I'm kind of glad actually that they used the, the color of black because it also works really well with the side of the bust. The whole idea really generally with these busts is that you're not going to have where it just looks like, like if this was say the section here on the front with the red, you really wouldn't want, I don't feel at least, you wouldn't want this side to be also red as well. I think the black by giving it the way they've done it gives a nice little sort of finished trim to the statue. The cape looks fantastic though. I really like the way they've sculpted the cape. There really isn't a lot of purples really at play here. There seems to be kind of more of a darker purple and then kind of in between the creases here. I don't know if you guys can actually see this or not. There seems to be one other shade of purple. Like I said, they kind of just airbrushed in there. You can also see as well, there's, he's sporting a little bit of hair on the back of his helmet. What's little, and of course, what you can see sticking out the bottom. And again, it just adds a little more to the realism of this. Even though really like the bust itself, if I actually put it down here for a second, the bust itself really is very much more rooted in the comic realm. But again, I really like the statue. The only thing I would say though, is, you know, again, like with the grimmest face like this and giving him the decision of going with the pupilless eyes, I feel like maybe they should have probably enhanced that by darkening the shadowing around here. Because again, I think it draws more attention to the eyes not being painted, but if they really wanted to go with a more sinister look for Magneto, I think if anything, painting that section, not even doing away with kind of like the colors that they did here now. I mean, but if they had just, cut this section here, cut this section here, and made that just all completely dark, not completely stark black, but at a really dark grade where it really would then make the pupils stand out a little bit more. I think that would also really up the ante, I feel, for what would be in, well, it is already a cool looking statue. But again, it's just the little details that I think would have also helped to enhance the look of Magneto if you have this guy displayed on your shelf depending on when you jump into the X-Men timeline, may then dictate how the Master of Magnetism is portrayed, either as a big baddie to the X-Men or as a mentor. I've always preferred the more classic villain look to Magneto, always being a foil to Charles Xavier, so this statue is right up my alley, giving him a big metallic medieval-style helmet and a big long flowing cape, although with this only being a bust, you don't get the full effect of it being a flowing cape, but at least what we do get of it, it's nicely sculpted. I would say head to toe, but it's only really head to shoulders. It's a nice looking Magneto. I don't know whether, again, some inspirational cues were added in there to give him a little more of a likeness bearing some resemblance to Arnold Schwarzenegger, but even if that's the case, I think it's a head sculpt that works really well for the statue. Now, whether you be on the side of a pupil version of Magneto or you prefer the pupilless look, the pupilless look, I think, works well for the statue, but I think to really enhance the idea that he has no pupils, I think by shadowing the sections around his eyes would have really given him that all fully evil Magneto. Other than that, though, I think it's a really nice looking statue. Again, if you are a big fan of Magneto and the X-Men, especially with now X-Men 97 out 
anybody has had the chance to watch X-Men 97, what you guys think of it, let me know down below. I've only really seen the first, what is it, the first two episodes? I guess that's all, that's the only thing that's really out right now. First two episodes I'm in, and I'm loving this series so far. Granted, we don't have an evil Magneto, but the fact that we have, like, again, all those characters based on the original 90s series, all sort of coming back, similar style, same voice actors, it's a good time to be an X-Men fan. If you guys are, again, interested to get the Legends in Three Dimensions Magneto, it is available right now online for $159.99. So he's about $160, at least from the two places that I checked out. But being that he's also limited to 1,000 pieces, it's not one that you really want to wait it out for. Just kind of say, mm, I don't know, I'm looking at my shelf right now. Do I need a Magneto? Well, I can kind of move those ones around. I've got this statue. Maybe I can give that away. No, no, don't wait it out because 1,000 may seem like a high number. A thousand can sell out, sell out really fast, though. Big thank you once again to the folks over at Diamond Select that provide this sample of new Legends in Three Dimensions X Men. Whether you want to be an X Men or leader of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, I prefer more the latter. We were looking at the Legends in Three Dimensions Magneto. Nice looking statue. If you guys did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, we will be looking, by the way, at more Diamond Select statues. Yes, so if you guys are looking forward to seeing more of those, don't worry, more will be coming your way, but making sure, yes, don't overlook hitting that subscribe button. Certainly don't overlook turning on the bell notification. And most importantly, don't overlook coming back here on a regular basis. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.